welcome to Gaming with Bob. Hello and welcome to my second video recording of Guild Ball. We just picked our plot cards. Have a handshake. I'm playing fish against Wolterhouse's Masons. First order of business is choosing our terrain. I've got two big pieces of 2D terrain, which is a uh, forest and a rough ground. I let my opponent decide which one we'll use blindly, and he can turn it over and throw it somewhere. And rough ground it is. So then, uh, that's the only rectangular light shape we ha have and that's a uh, obstacle I use it in most of my games now I just do a dice roll to see how many more uh, terrain we put up and well you clearly saw it five pieces we turn and throw alternatingly so what you see now here in the bottom corner is another obstacle um, I threw another patch of rough ground on top, then a barrier uh, on the left side. And I think that's a barrier on the right top hand corner. Fast ground in the middle. Rolling out for initiative. I roll a five, my opponent rolls a six. Here's my response. Team selection happened prior to the game. On the left side we have masons with honor, marbles, brick, harmony, flint and mallet. And I play shark, salt, grayscales, sakana, angel and siren. I'm setting up shark as the kicker. I'm setting him up in the middle. I put salt next to him. But I'll move him later. I play sakana at the bottom. And grayscales on the other side. Uh, place Angel next to him because she's got light footed with the rough ground up there. And then Siren's placed next to Shark, and this is the point then where I move Salt down to Sakana to have a even stretch of two models uh, across my setup line. Then my opponent puts what did you expect brick in the center of it all he follows up with marbles next to him and then honor in between harmony's down at the bottom she stays there but scoots over a little closer and then at the top the other side is flint and then now it's left and he gets placed in between a monkey and harmony Next, we proceed with the kickoff. Um, I'm using uh, measuring widgets where my opponent uses a tape measure. I knock over Siren. So, yeah, I'm a clumsy player. I uh, can't say it's the first and doubtfully the last time I'll knock into. Uh, luckily my own models for this uh, game so Shark puts the ball on the other side but not too far and uh, we place the kick scatter on the ball and then roll off we have a red dice and a yellow dice in there see where it scatters to after I roll for his kick which is successful and then the ball goes one inch in the direction four so that's about where the ball ends and then we get on with influence allocation influenza. right for influence allocation the masons have a 12 of total to divide where the Fisher's men have 13. My opponent puts 6 on honor, 1 on flint, 1 on brick, 1 on marbles, 
initially two on mallet and one on uh, harmony, but then judges that the second one is more needed on harmony than on mallet and passes the turn to me. So I put six on shark, and as this is my first time playing shark, I have no idea what to do with the rest of it. Since he's a one-man show, I've heard. I uh, decide to put three on Siren, two on Grayscales, one on Angel, one on Sakana, and that makes thirteen. So we're off for our first turn. For our first turn, my opponent um, asks me about threat ranges and shark, since he's uh, not used to fish. As an opponent, I normally pay, uh, play brewers. And not knowing the players, I have to read everything off the card, boring my opponent, who says, well, stop reading, it doesn't matter, when I kill shark, all that information is void. He opts to um, trundle up with brick towards the ball to collect it, snaps the ball to him, and using the football legend aura from Mallet, tries to pass the ball towards his team captain, Oma. Normally he's got one die to do that, but thanks to the aura, now he's got two. And thankfully for that, because the one wouldn't have made it, the number four makes it a successful pass. He collects the momentum for the pass and passes the turn. So my activation is with Shark. I measure a round brick, trying to stay in his engagement because I know he can uh, counter charge. But I'm forgetting about the monkey here. I'm uh, measuring out where I end up. And uh, after that, I've got three inches left. So I'm going to scoot more behind Brick to end my advance. Engaging Honor, but preventing her to get to Shark. Right, I've finished the sprint. I uh, take one influence away for that. And then he says, well, I'm going to counter charge with my monkey. And I said, well, yeah, I did engage him. So, hmm, go right ahead. On screen, it might look like he doesn't have the angle to get to me. But that's just because the way the camera is set up. In fact, he does have a straight line to charge Shark. Even though it doesn't look like that. He's able to it. And if not, we decided the act, so don't worry about it. And then he does something really crazy. With his three tack, plus four for the charge is seven. And then gaining one from Brick, who's also engaging Shark. He's got a total of eight dice, needing fours and one. And what does he do? He's got 1-1, one, one, as you can see, which is not a hit. And then all the rest of them are hits, deducting 1 for armor. He's got 6 net hits. So right here I'm looking at marbles like, um, are you going to push me 2 inches away and collect 2 momentum? and then shove me out of position with everyone, so I've got five influence wasted. Maybe I can dodge back in and... Well, my, he's limiting my options if he does that, but he chooses to do full damage instead. So, I might say happily uh, take the damage, and then I uh, hit Honor, 
see if I can hit the tackle. Normally I've got six dice, but I'm engaged by mallet, uh, by um, brick and marbles. And I got two hits for a tackle. Non-momentous. And now I need momentum to actually shoot at the goal. So I'm opting to hit on brick, who seems to be the easiest target. I've got 6 minus 1 for marbles, which becomes 5. And after deduction of armor, I have 3 net hits. And I pick a momentous gut and string, lowering the defense of brick and limiting his um, movement for possible future counter charges. Because I hope to make a second goal after the goal kick is resolved, even though my influence allocation isn't optimal on the fisherman. So I take another swing on brick. I've got six dice this time, because he's uh, on one defense, which is two, but gives me uh, an extra die. Then he declares to do a counterattack with brick. So I have to move out if possible, and I'm not in base to base. So after scoring four hits, I make a momentous push dodge, pushing him out of engagement with me, getting rid of the counterattack. And then I stay in engagement with marbles, and make sure I can still hit um, honor, I think. Then, with influence still left, I opt to make another hit on Honor, since she can't counterattack with only a melee of one. I've got five dice, because marbles can get to me. Mm, then I roll... Poorly, my eyes. But I've got three successes, and also momentous cut and string Honor. I'm pretty pleased with the results so far. The turn might have been different if he had uh, pushed me away. So, with all my momentum generated, I finally make a shot on goal, normally with four dice, but three because marbles gets to me, and I bonus time that to go back up to four dice. I'm rolling, hoping for one four, and it's not on camera, I think, but I've got two sixes. The one on the bottom is an engineer die, and one out of screen. So I got a screamer, giving me two momentum. Then I announce the knee slider, and I get the hell out of dodge. I have to read out the card, because it's been a while since my opponent played good ball, even though he knows the Masons, uh, Masons through and through. So, after scoring a goal, I'm going to limit the options of his murder team coming after Shark, and I opt to go as far away as I can from as many players as I can, which is basically uh, away from the gut and string models. Maybe Mar uh, Mallet can get to me. But as a response, I get a plot card on me as well, putting a vengeance token on Shark. So then we have the goal kick. Um, he decides to boot the ball right over his players and hope for a not too distant uh, shot scatter. It goes four inches in the direction of one, that's straight towards Brick. But since he's already activated, he doesn't want to snap the ball. Because it would have been, well, a dead ball at that point. So he he leaves it as a free ball and um, activates Honor, who's uh, 
on minus four minus four movement she's got just enough to walk up to the ball with a jog snap it and then tries to passes it to harmony with the aura from mallet again who gives her an extra die and uh, a lot of influence left on her so i think i know what's coming if the pass is successful i'm betting my money on a superior strategy and then i see a harmony goal coming so we roll for the pass itself and i'm actually crossing my fingers so it would fail but what do you want it's a success the ball lands on her sister she immediately immediately oh words and i'm not even drunk yet so she immediately makes a dodge and uh one of the bystanders here says fishermen are pussies i make a comment that they might smell the same but they're totally different anyhow i cut this piece out because we had a lot of uh, discussion out of game going on and uh superior strategy happens an extra influence goes on uh harmony i activate siren thinking i can seduce harmony into passing the ball to me but unfortunately seduced costs me three influence which means if i get there which i'm measuring out it means i'm stuck there with the ball bringing it even closer to my goal for a easy steal I should have put four on Siren so she could pass back to Sakana, leaving the ball relatively safe on him with his uh, free counter attack. So I end my movement within six of Brick, but he's cutting string, so I'm not worried about that. He knows checks, but decides not to do anything. Who knows, a model might end up closer where a counter charge is viable. So, I say I'm going to do the character play seduced. Pick Harmony as my target. And then I roll three dice, hoping for one five. I don't believe in the dice gods. Maybe they don't believe in me because of it. I bonus time it, but no five. No five, the ball stays on harmony and, well, there I stand, not even able to dodge away after a successful pass. Mallet activates, jogs up towards a siren, but then he says, no, I'm going to bend a bit and go towards the uh, obstruction there. And then passes the turn back to me. I don't know what to do, but since I see the ball going towards my goalpost, I opt to put some models in the way before he actually gets there. Scooting salt over to the goalpost. He doesn't activate harmony yet. Instead opts to put marbles closer to the middle line. Maybe for a uh, counter charge towards Shark next turn, I don't know what he's planning there. I'm a bit of a loss what to do now. I can't reach the ball and I opt to move Sakana in the way of a clear goal shot. Uh, hoping Siren and Sakana with two inch melee will be enough to stop the goal. I position myself outside the six inches of brick this time because I don't want them too close for next turn. 
And then my opponent opts to activate Harmony. She's printing. And because she's on the fast ground after a sprint, she gets 10 inches. There's a bit of measuring going on of where to end the movement. And he finally decides to put Harmony right next to Sakana, in between Siren and Sakana. I tell my opponent if he buys an attack on Sakana, I've got a free counter attack with Poised. He thanks me for the information, but waits for his superior strategy uh, activation to do something else, because what am I going to do? Both models already had their turn. At this point I could get grayscales to Harmony with a sprint and a where they go, but then I am out of influence, so what am I going to do, eh? I decide to activate Angel. I jog her onto the rough ground and uh, put Nimble up. Flint activates, walks up to Shark and hits him with his normal tack, opting to use the Vengeance as a bonus for net hits. In total has, I believe it was 8 hits and he chooses all damage results to put on uh, the Shark Master himself. So I have to activate Grayscales now, since he's my last model. I opt to go for the Sprint and the where they go. I'm only doubting about whether I should engage her finishing my where they go or not. If you have a preference, uh, let me know in the comments below. Of course, in the end, it will not matter as uh, Harmony will use Acrobatic to get out of dodge. As you can see here, she dodges away, leaving everybody's engagement, then staying on the fast ground, increasing her jog to 8 inches. We have some uh, measuring going on, agreeing on where she can end to make a shot on goal, leaving the position she was in without going into uh, the melee range of any of my players and after that she makes a shot on goal which is successful thanks to a bonus timed shot with only one success so after the successful goal i have to make a goal kick i choose my placement somewhere in between sakana grayscales and siren Totally forgetting I have the option to kick towards Angel and Shark who probably have a better chance of scoring but because of Harmony and because of Mallet I don't do that because I think they would steal the ball too easily where I have more players uh, on the left side. Well, either way I did it wrong. I should have done it on the other side because he doesn't have any players there, and I've got Shark there. I'm sure Shark would have stolen the ball if Harmony got it off Angel, if it uh, actually snapped to Angel in the first place. So anyhow, that was a mistake. It goes four in the direction of four, able to snap it to Siren, and that's exactly what I do. And then we roll off for initiative for turn two. I roll a 3, my opponent rolls more and elects to go first, so I keep my 1 point of momentum. Right, influence allocation for turn 2. Uh, we both have one more influence because we both have one goal. So he goes with 4 on mallet, 5 on honor, 1 on brick, 2 on flint, uh, 0 on marbles and 1 on harmony. Yeah, he's going to score again, isn't he? Then I go, put five on Shark, uh, begin with two on Angel, but end up putting three on her, three on Grayscales, and three on Siren. Nothing on Salt, nothing on Sakana. Uh, I think it was bad play, but 
Hey, it's my first fish game. Give me a break. Right, first activation for the Masons is Mallet charging into Siren. Having five dice as a base tack, plus four for the charge is nine dice needing fives and oh. I am tempted to use my momentum to go on a defensive stance, but I say why would I go ahead? Of course the dice gods love him because he wraps for a momentous tackle and a momentous singled out. His second swing has got seven dice, five base tack, two four singled out, and only gives him two net hits. He opts to go with a momentous push, keeping me within two inches, even though he could push me out and have me engaged with his three, he does not. He then, with his last uh, influence, hits me again for seven dice and only one net hit this time, and he picks the momentous smashed shins result. I then uh, let it slip my attention but he unsnaps the ball while engaged. This is not possible, but hey, mistakes are made, and as a famous, uh, or maybe not so famous, song goes, we're only human after all. Mistakes are made, the ball's unsnapped, and he passes the turn. I activate Sakana, who's got no influence, and goes into engagement with Harmony. Honor activates for the Masons, walks into Siren, preventing a defensive stance. Has a 6 tack, plus 2 for single out, plus 1 for mallet is 9 dice. Rolling gives her full damage, which takes Siren to 6 life. Oh, she's gonna die. Second swing with 9 dice gives her Four results for three damage and only three left. Third swing. Bonus time gives him ten dice. And that's more than enough to kill Siren. Why oh why did I not activate her in an attempt to recover the ball even if it were to kick it into space? Or towards great scales for that matter. Who could then use the ball to go somewhere, give it to Shark, score a goal, be ahead, but no, the score is six to Masons, four to the Fishermen. With the remaining influence, uh, Honor uses quick time to go and pick up the ball. Right, on my activation, I uh, activate Grayscales. I do some measuring to engage Brick and Honor, but not uh, Mallet. Then I charge into the position, and uh, my opponent opts to counter charge with marbles. Um, marbles charges into grayscales, upon which time I uh, declare unpredictable movement. And here's a question that is going to follow, because I unpredictable move into honor, but within her one inch melee. Now, I want to know at what time that counter attack has to be declared. Because I ended my charge outside of her melee, but I dodged into it after the unpredictable movement, and then I took an attack on her with the uh, charge dice and my opponent declared a counter-attack, which we allowed. So I don't know if that's correct, but we played it that way. Good sportsmanship. My fault of dodging into the one-inch melee, so whatever. Um, I eventually get a balls gone result. I use a card to make a uh, kick action while I'm engaged, giving me two extra die, losing the one because I'm engaged, is one net extra. I kick it into space and let it scatter. It scatters against the enemy goalpost. 
and then the counter attack comes in um with six dice against grayscales uh three hits come out of that and on a picks a push dodge result i then use my last influence with grayscales to do a where they go into cover i've got a feeling i've piloted the fish not the best i could would you have moved elsewhere? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I can learn. Right? Honor activates for the Masons. Walks into Siren, preventing a defensive stance. Has a 6 tack. Plus 2 for singled out. Plus 1 for mallet is 9 dice. Rolling gives her full damage, which takes Siren to 6 life. Oh, she's gonna die. Second swing with 9 dice gives her 4 results for 3 damage and only 3 left. Third swing, bonus time, gives him 10 dice. And that's more than enough to kill Siren. Why or oh why did I not activate her in an attempt to recover the ball, even if it were to kick it into space? Or towards great scales, for that matter. Who could then use the ball to go somewhere, give it to Shark, score a goal, be ahead? But no, the score is 6 to Masons, 4 to the Fishermen. With the remaining influence, uh, Honor uses quick time to go and pick up the ball. I activate Salt, who jogs up seven inches towards the action. Masons then activate Harmony, who uses acrobatics to go out of engagement with Sakana. Did I go base to base? Apparently not. And she then jogs away. Ta ta! On the fish activation, we go with Shark, who uses 3 for a tidal surge on Angel. Then I measure if I can get closer to the fast ground, but I'm too close to the counter charge ranges. And can't end outside of uh, 6. So I move to the back lines or back to my goal line instead. Then use the remaining two influence to put Quickfoot on Angel. And then I pass the turn. Rick goes next for the Masons, trundles up and positions himself on the fast ground. Counter charge with two extra movement, anyone? Fish activate Angel, hoping for miracles to happen. I want to charge on a but to do so successfully, I need to be still within range of Brick, so he can't counter-charge me. And I have to stop in a position where marbles can't get to me. That means, if I want to get to the ball, I'm also engaged by Mallet. After measuring everything and coming to an agreement, I move Angel over and roll the dice. Four, plus 4 for the charge, minus 1 for cover, minus 1 for brick, minus 1 for mallet is 5 dice, needing 3s and 2 armor. And then I get a poised counter attack against me. I roll, get only 1 hit. I think, well, why not pick the momentous tackle? I get the ball, and then the counter attack comes in. He lands two hits, tackles the ball back, and there I am, with one influence on Angel, whittling her tums. Well, I don't want to use the uh, influence for nothing, but Super Shot kind of does nothing. Well, I still put it up, because attacking again is useless. Eh, end Angel activation. Marbles comes up next and walks into the group of Masons. The score is still 6 to Masons, 4 to Fishermen, and we roll for initiative on turn 3. 
Oh, I lose it again. Masons go first, and I'm ready to go and get, well, flint action, if you know what I mean. Then we go over to influence allocation for turn three. Masons still have 13 influence to divide after one goal, and fishermen still have 14 after one goal. Siren has been taken out, but she'll come back on the field from the bottom of your screen. And we start with Masons. Honor gets 6, Armory gets 2, Mallet gets 4, Brick gets 1, and Flint and Marbles get nothing. Then we have, on the Fisherman's side, Grayscales with 3, Shark gets 5, Sakana gets 3, and Siren, who comes up, also gets 3. Angel has nothing, and Salt has nothing. Why do I give Angel nothing? Did she disappoint too much last activation? I don't know. I need to study fish more. Right, the last turn, well, two activations in turn three, both Mason, go as follows. Honor activates, takes a first attack on Angel, I hope to Jedi mind trick Waldron about everything he does, but he doesn't fall for it. I think he's got six dice, plus two for marbles, plus one for mallet, plus one for brick, needing fives and no. Oh. And I know what's coming. A couple of swings, a takeout, pass to harmony, and a goal attempt. I hope something goes wrong with his dice rolling. First swing he does, he chooses the knockdown condition. I can't persuade him to take damage, hoping next rolls won't hit fives, leaving me alive, messing up his plans. As I said, he doesn't take the bait, knocks me down, uses a second swing to land four hits for four damage, thanks to the assist of marbles, Third swing does the same, fourth swing, again this four damage. He didn't take momentous results, but guess what? Taking out Angel gives him two VP, bringing the score up to 8-4, and the momentum point needed to score a goal. He moves Honor towards a Harmony, passes her the ball, and it's a successful pass giving another momentum point, the bonus time to shot. I remember that I tried to tempt him into a snapshot, but, well, family goes first. Why would he risk needing two uh, target number tests, two results, if he can activate and only need one? So that's what he does. He activates Harmony using family, and the honor stats, because she activates within close enough proximity of her sister, takes the shot on goal, and of course he gets a screamer. That ends the game. Congratulations, Walter. I'll let you have the final word while we shake hands. Not good at that, this was Gaming with Bob, thank you for your attention, see you next time.